Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So saying that this is dated for the 24th of October is really just for organizational purposes. It really does not mean that it has to resonate on this day. Whenever you watch this reading or whenever you're drawn to it and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time in your life. Yes? Okay. So I don't really have a pre-shuffle um, because I have a few announcements or a few things that I want to say first before I get started. First of all, thank you all so, so much for being so supportive and understanding. Yesterday was a very rough day for me um, and it was a personal thing. However, um, <laughs> we are in Scorpio season and um, it, in my opinion, Scorpio season has definitely gotten off with a bang. Yeah. Betsy uh, of Fearless Intuition, she, she mentioned that in her daily reading yesterday and I was like, yup, <laughs> yup. Um, but also I ended up not doing happy hour last night because even though I had hoped to be able to pull myself together um, to really be able to do uh, readings well for people by the end of the day yesterday. Um, it just, by the time I got to like four o'clock, it, uh, I was just so exhausted from being so, um, emotionally volatile all day and just like crying, like literally crying all day long. Um, I was just exhausted. So I was like, you know what, let me just not, let me just rest, go to sleep, you know, have, enjoy the rest of my night and be rested so that I can do it later. So, Instead of yesterday, we're going to be doing happy hour tonight, okay? So um, I already have two people on the list. I already contacted the both of you. Um, and so, um, yeah, so we're going to do happy hour tonight. And that's exciting. Um, I did post a, I went live on Instagram yesterday. Um, and I talked about ex what exactly was happening for me. So if you're interested in checking that out, go ahead and check out my Instagram page <clears throat> at divine underscore conversations. Um, there's a live video up there that describes what I went through yesterday. If you're curious, if you're interested, um, maybe it resonate, maybe it'll resonate with you. I don't know, who knows? I mean, we all are connected, so hey, you never really know. So while I don't, I'm not really saying that what I went through, what I experienced yesterday was part of like a, a wave of like purging or emotion or whatnot, I will say that it is very much in line with what's going on with the counterpart collective. Well, just the collective as a whole, but you know what I mean. Um, also, a little bit of fun facts. We are coming up on the one year anniversary of Morning Coffee, you guys. <laughs> this is so cool. I believe it's like around November 9th or something. I, I have to double check. I did check once. Um, I'll look another time. I'll, I'll look just to make sure. Um, so that's exciting. I'm very excited about that. I mean, the, to, to think that, you know, uh, morning coffee is turning a year old soon and then divine conversations like the channel is gonna be two soon yeah as of january 8th divine conversations will be two years old oh man this is really exciting i'm really super excited about that um so also one last tidbit that i want to share i am i promise you guys i am working on um <laughs> getting a p.o box together and I would like to do get that set up before um, before the anniversary of morning coffee so that if you guys want to like send anything in uh, you know in commemoration of that that would be awesome um, I don't like mugs I, mean, I don't know like you know, cute mugs for for our coffee here or um, I mean if you have like a favorite deck that you want to send or something like that or you just like want to or if you just want to send like a holiday card or something like that I don't know whatever you want to do um, I'm hoping to get that set up soon I know I've been saying I'm <laughs> I've been saying that for a while <laughs> and I just haven't been able to really nail it down but I'm gonna do it I promise um, and I think that's it I have some other things that I want to talk about, you know, going forward, you know, for the weekend and whatnot, but we can do that 
tomorrow. Well, I'll say this. I'll, I'll give you a heads up now, and then we'll talk about it again tomorrow, I'll remind you tomorrow. But um, I don't think I'm going to be able to, be, to do the uh, the uh, intermasculine, interfeminine readings this weekend just because I'm going to be on a three-day production gig from Friday through Sunday. Um, and, well, yeah, tomorrow through Sunday. Uh, and I think I have to... I'm starting it. I think at my call time on tomorrow is like one in the afternoon so I'll be able to do morning coffee or the weekend edition for morning coffee for sure but um normally I record the masculine and feminine readings Friday and then I release them on Saturday but because I have this gig I'm gonna I'm not gonna be able to do that most likely also with that said I'm most likely not going to be able to do morning coffee on Monday, mainly because I'm doing, um, I've got a produ this production gig from Friday to Sunday, and then Sunday night, it looks like I will be, um, I will have another gig, but late. Like, my call time for that is going to be like 9.45 at night, um, and it's a show, so... Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and like cut my losses there <laughs> and say we're most likely not gonna have morning coffee because I'm probably gonna be out really super late Sunday night. Well, obviously my call time is 9.45 for that for that thing. And then um, that's gonna go late because it's at like a bar and club. So anyway, there's that. That's just a heads up. I'll remind you guys tomorrow, but yeah. Okay, so with all of that said, I believe we can get started here. Bear with me. Also, my allergies seem to be flaring up at the moment. You know what? Before I before I go any further, let me just handle that real quick. Give me just one second. Okie dokie. That's better. That feels a lot better, actually. And actually, it's a good thing that I did that because I didn't realize that my mic, the input volume on my microphone was like way low, but I just turned it way up, so it should be better now. Um, so, okay. I don't, again, I don't really have a pre-shuffle, but I was shuffling a little bit, and that's when I was just like, you know what, let's just get into it. And I landed here with <laughs> the tower, which actually is Scorpio energy, and the two of wands okay so uh, to be quite honest you know this does kind of feel quite on point right now um, at least for me what I'm going what I've been experiencing lately but um, collectively um, what people are experiencing there is some massive changes here um, big changes big big changes but it's leading you to it's leading you on a new path. What I'm getting with this so far is that you, there, are, there are things that are crumbling. There are things that you are releasing. That's okay. This tower energy here feels much more like a release than it does feel like any sort of like destruction. Okay. There may be some things that are dismantled or some things that um, cease to be, sure. But it doesn't really feel so much of a destructive energy as it feels a releasing energy, okay? Which is then ultimately opening you up to make a choice to move in a new direction. I almost kind of feel like you have already made a choice. Um, and you might have been for a while just waiting for some sort of sign, synchronicity, or just the clear and open space to move on that, to take some sort of action. That's what I feel like this is talking about here okay so with that said let's um let's get into the rest of the reading hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our thursday october 24th 2019 Ooh, thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, um, that wasn't a bad groan. It was actually an interesting one. It just, the energy felt very palpable um, as I was channeling it into the cards this time. That's really cool. Okay, so three shuffles here. One, 
for our Thursday, October 24th, 2019. What would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Two. And three. All right. Let's see what we've got, guys. For our Thursday, October 24th. Um, I feel like... I wanna, I wanna speak on, uh, there may be some ascension symptoms that are going on right now. I'm kind of feeling a little bit of that. Um, I've been, I've had like, a, I don't, my eyes are closed so I can't see what this card is, but I, I'll talk about it in a second. I've had a slight headache for the last two days. Um, I just feel like, and, and I'm seeing white right now, which is, which is, uh, and I'm feeling like it's, it's, it's a purification process, which is definitely indicative of that tower energy that we saw. Um, that is like some sort of release. Yeah, I heard purge. Okay, uh, let's keep going. What do we for? Ooh, all right. October twenty fourth messages. What do you want to talk about today, spirit? What do you want to discuss with us today? That's enough. They say. Okay, excellent. Overall energy. We have. Woo. Okay, we have the five of wands. And on the other side of the deck, we have the Eight of Swords. But again, this is talking, to me, this is talking about um, release, releasing something, okay? Yeah, all right, so the first card that came out is actually the Ace of Cups. And then we have the Ten of Wands, the Knight of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, but that is in reverse, and then we have the Six of Swords. So, um... Okay, so this is definitely talking about whatever release is happening here. There is definitely a differing of opinion here, but this is pretty volatile, all right? Look at, it's this side of the Five of Wands in which we have a volcano erupting behind these two people. There is definitely a strong differing of opinion going on right now. I am kind of feeling like this has to do with a relationship, but... That's a pretty, I mean that in a broad term. I don't mean, I don't necessarily mean romance, although it absolutely, I'm getting the chills. Look, I've got goosebumps. Can you see? I got goosebumps. I don't know why. I have goosebumps all over my body right now. But this feels like, it can be a love relationship. It absolutely can be a love relationship. But it also, it feels, um, it feels like it doesn't have to be that. It could be friendships. It could be business partnerships. It could be family there is a big differing of opinion here, and it feels like this is something that has been swept under the rug for a very, very, very long time. The relationship is not reciprocal. Whatever this relationship is for you, if this resonates for you, the relationship is not reciprocal. Six of Pentacles in reverse. And thus, there is a need to move away from it. Six of Swords, okay? And I'm definitely getting an energy of releasing the struggle. Now, this might be something that you have been carrying for a very long time with this Knight of Pentacles, Ten of Wands energy, okay? The Knight of Pentacles, it can, it is a slow moving knight, yes, uh, slowest moving knight in the deck, but when he's balanced and when he's, uh, when he's, um, yeah, when he's balanced, he's productive, okay? He's sincere, he's honest, he's a hard worker, he's loyal, he's committed to the job, um, but he's also, <laughs> I heard painstakingly accurate, but that comes from <laughs> that comes from the, the 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 fact that the Knight of Pentacles, yes, moves very slow, but he does things well. He makes sure he's moving so slow because he wants to make sure that he does things right. Okay, he doesn't want to have to figure out once he's reached his destination that something in the process went wrong. He did something wrong. It was incorrect. And it needs to be fixed, and now he has to double back. That's not what he's about. Okay. But when the Knight of Pentacles is not balanced, he's stuck, he's stagnant, he's stubborn, he's egotistical. I'm feeling, what I'm feeling from this Knight of Pentacles is a very self-righteous energy, potentially. Um, I'm just feeling like a, an energy of someone who just feels like he's always right, he or she is always right. And yet, He's stunted in some way because he is the Knight of Pentacles. If this was the King of Pentacles, it would be different because the King of Pentacles, it kind of, well, it would be a little bit different because the King of Pentacles at least has reached that King status, right? Has reached that, um, ooh, ooh, sorry guys, I might sneeze. Hold on. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Um, he's reached a certain king status, a certain status of mastery. Here, this is the Knight of Pentacles. He's not quite there yet, right? There is a, there is a certain arrogance about this Knight of Pentacles energy. It doesn't have to be a man. It can be a woman, but there's a certain stubbornness to this. And, um, and actually, it might be you. It may actually be you because... What I'm getting with the Ten of Wands here is this is what is, these are the burdens that need to be released. And I'm, I'm getting an energy of continuing on with the circumstance. Okay. Continuing with the circumstances or the situation that is now being released or you're needing to release or you're needing to leave behind. Um, maybe for financial reasons, uh, for security reasons. Also, maybe because you may have, you may have made some sort of commitment, but now as the as time has gone on, you've started to realize that this is not something that you really want to be a part of anymore. It's really burdensome. It's really tiring. It's really draining. Um, it, it's it's it, you're having. Maybe it might seem it might be inauthentic to you. It might be really toxic for you. And yet, with the Knight of Pentacles energy, it's like nope. We got to see this through. We got to see this through. We got to see this through. Where, where. In your heart, you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. But then your mind is like, nope, we got to see this through. We got to see this through. We got to see this through. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hold on. I got to I gotta blow my nose again. Um, but um, so, I mean, funny, because I just heard this worked out in your favor. Maybe it's going to work out in your favor, or maybe it has worked out in your favor because you've come to a certain, well, yes, it may really have worked out in your favor because then we have the Ace of Cups. And what I'm getting with the Ace of Cups is that you are learning to love yourself. It's like you've been pushed into an energy of basically being forced to love yourself enough to recognize that you need to release yourself from this situation. You need to move on from these circumstances, okay? So yeah, that really has worked out in your favor. Now, for others of you, another thing that I'm getting here with this Knight of Pentacles, Ten of Wands energy is it is your own materialistic desires. Um, desires, demands, um, coming from a pretty egotistical, maybe, yeah, materialism, um, 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 greed, uh, a, a, a very strong focus on money, status, that in that led you to get into this circumstance to begin with, and you're awake. You're going. I feel like somebody has basically been going through an awakening process here, in which they're now being forced to love themselves. And as you, as this, as you see, and it's perfect that it's coming out as a nighttime scene because I feel like either this energy is slowly creeping into your awareness or it has been slowly creeping into your awareness. And which with each inch that it moves, I don't know, inch, centimeter, millimeter, whatever, with, with each increment or each step, it takes further, further, further into your awareness, you're becoming more and more aware of the burdens and how you gotta let go. And how this is this situation is not reciprocal. Six of Pentacles in reverse. You need to move on from this. Someone needs to move on from here. You may be aware of this. You may you may be fully aware of this, and you might be taking action towards it, or you are slowly but surely becoming aware of this. And like the tension is building, and something's about to erupt. Okay, this could be a really explosive ending. But see, look, also the Eight of Swords is here. And it's the side of the card where we see that she, this woman is not as bound as she thinks she is. The eagle, the eagle here is about freedom, is about a higher state of awareness. The eagle represents feminine energy. Who was talking about this? I think it was Water Baby Tarot. She was, she was speaking of, she was talking about the difference between a hawk and an eagle. A hawk represents more of the masculine energy because a hawk is a really very active hunter, is a very much a go-getter, is like a, 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 uses their very keen sense of sight to, to 
focus on their pl on their prey and dive in after it. The hawk is more, no, not sorry, not the hawk. The eagle is more receptive. Is not so, um, is not so like uh, aggressive, I guess you could say, as maybe a hawk would be. The, and so the eagle re represents femininity, feminine energy, receptive energy, but it also represents higher states of awareness. And it's these higher states of awareness that are going to help you break out of this eight of swords or this mental entrapment. And the materialism that I'm picking up on here with this knight of pentacles absolutely could be a form of mental entrapment, especially if it's something that you learned um, as a form of programming from early life, like I'm, I'm hearing specifically from your parents, but it also could be just the rest of society. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I am hearing specifically that it is most likely, mostly something that you've learned, uh, acquired from parents or family. It may even be an ancestral lineage type thing, okay? Okay. Yes, it's time for clarification. I'm going to be going into the wild unknown tarot because I just want to I want to get a little bit more of a clearer understanding of what these energies are for you right now. Any other messages that we can get in terms of these energies and then I'm going to go to the golden universal tarot for spirits take on the situation to get you some advice moving forward. Yes. Okay. I'm going to give this two more shuffles. You know what's funny? I look at this Five of Wands energy with this side of the card of, of it being like the, the volcano erupting and I always I always almost feel like it's like a pimple <laughs> that's getting ready to pop. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's get a little bit clearer information here for you guys. What is this energy? What is this energy here for these? individuals for these people here Oop. all right well yeah we definitely have five of swords we've got that five of swords okay oof all right overall energy we do have the nine of swords that makes perfect sense we have the five of swords we also have the queen of pentacles and i'm hearing that's a mother oof Whoa, okay, well, here we go. We've got death in reverse and we've got two of pentacles in reverse. Very interesting. Um, very interesting. Okay, first of all, the queen of pentacles has been coming out a lot lately. Um, okay. Queen of Pentacles has been coming out a lot lately. I feel like what this looks like here, what this feels like, I feel like somebody is resisting. What's this? This wants to be seen. Ah, the hanged man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, that makes sense. All right. Someone's resisting. Someone is resisting a transformation. And it has to do with their mother, Queen of Pentacles. Ugh. Wow. Um, I still have the goosebumps. Look, look, I still have goosebumps, you guys. Do you see it? You see it? I still have goosebumps. Um, yeah. It could, it, this really could have to do with your mother or with a mother figure or, or you could be this nurturing motherly energy. However, and, 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 okay, so it could, it could be, it could physically be your mother or a mother, or it could be a man who is just in this nurturing parental energy. I'm not, I don't even, at that, at, for that, I don't want to call it a, um, uh, a mother type energy. I want to call it a parental energy, a nurture, a caregiving energy, nurturing, care, uh, caregiving, uh, unconditionally loving, yes, um, balanced Potentially well, grounded, I should say grounded, ish. I don't know how I, I don't know how grounded this person is, but um, or this energy is because of what's going on here. You might be grounded. You might be a little too grounded. Aha! There it is. You might be a little bit too grounded, and there is a certain sense of practicality that is getting in your way 
Five of Swords. Five of Swords is self-sabotage, is lose-lose situations. You have the Nine of Swords here. Someone is afraid to make a, dis to, to make a change. Yep. Someone is afraid to make a change. Um, and to be quite honest, if this is you, if you are this Queen of Pentacles energy, um, you're sabotaging yourself because you're overgiving. I told you this situation is not reciprocal. Six of Pentacles. And this is not the type of energy that a Queen of Pentacles that is balanced uh, would stay in. However, I feel like, yes, there are obligations here that are keeping you in this position. There are obligations here that are keeping you in this position, but you are, but you are overly grounded here overly grounded if the situation is not reciprocal if it's toxic if it's not if it's not working out if you're beating a dead horse if you're trying something over and over again the same way expecting a new a different result or if you're trying something over and over and over again that you know is not going to work that you know doesn't work for you that you know does not make you happy that you know is not fulfilling that you know is not reciprocal then you are sabotaging yourself now on the other hand i am picking up on an energy in which someone has some sort of attachment, affiliation, a tie to a mother in which it is destructive for this person. Not necessarily for the mother, however, I do feel like it is destructive for her as well. Again, you have the Five of Swords, that's a lose-lose situation. Nobody wins with the Five of Swords, okay? So what, and what I'm feeling here is your mother or this, this mother-like figure um, has a certain mindset, a certain way of looking at the world, a certain way of doing things, certain expectations of you or something like that. And that does not align with you. And the only reason that you are holding on to this, the only reason that you are resisting this change and keeping up appearance with the Two of Pentacles uh, and death in reverse um, is because... I don't, well, all right, fine. Yeah, you love this person. Okay, that's great. But you don't want to disappoint them. You don't want to disappoint the family. You don't, I don't, I mean, I mean, but you've got to love yourself, boo. <laughs> I mean, I'm hearing authenticity is the key here. I feel like this if this if you're resonating with that side of the story this queen of pentacles is has a very limited mindset has a very limited view on the world and that is a detriment to her as well and it's funny because I feel like maybe this may not be for all of you but for some of you I feel like if you really look at what is going on in this person's life if this if this queen of pentacles is not you if you and and don't get me wrong um it does feel like a mother but it doesn't have to be a mother it could be a man that is in this nurturing caregiving energy whatnot whatever but this person here if this is not you this person if you're resonating with this side of the story if and, and for certain amount of certain individuals out here it may not be for all of you but if you were to look at what's going on in that person's life like if you were to just sit back and observe that person's surroundings in relation to their limited point of view, you would probably really understand why you would need to n remove yourself from this affiliation. I'm not saying remove yourself from the person's life all uh, uh, like completely 100%, but what I am saying is remove yourself from these burdens that you're carrying that no longer serve you in which this is not reciprocal. Someone is resisting a change here. Death is in reverse, Two of Pentacles is in reverse, and I do not like seeing the Two of Pentacles in reverse because that, 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 that is an energy of stalling, keeping up appearance, saving face, all for the sake of balance, but the situation is not balanced. It's not balanced at all, okay? Okay. Okay, so with that said, I, I want to get Spirit's take on this now then. I'm sorry, hold on. Before I do that, let me just, let me blow my nose one more time. Sorry guys, hold on a second.
Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That should be okay. I should be able to get us through the rest of the reading here. All right. I want to get Spirit's take on this now and get some advice for you here. Yeah, one more shuffle. And we'll see what we've got for you. Okie dokie, here we go. Woo! Wheel of Fortune is the very first card that popped out. And you know what I heard with that? It's time to move on. <laughs> it's actually been time to move on. Yeah. It's also a bit of reassurance here because I do feel like with what I'm getting, what Spirit is kind of giving me here with this Wheel of Fortune energy, somebody has been in an energy of being afraid of what it's going to mean or what's gonna happen if they were to leave this situation behind. And what the Wheel of Fortune is saying here is fortune will follow you because you will be clearing space away for something that really does resonate for you, okay? The Knight of Wands in reverse. Interesting. The Nine of Wands in reverse. Oh, I think the deck is... <laughs> my deck is upside down. Uh, but I'm going to leave them reversed. Oh, gosh. Eight of Pentacles is underneath the deck. And you know what? It was all reversed. So I'm going to leave this Eight of Pentacles reversed here because it actually makes it makes a lot more sense with what I'm picking up on. Ooh, 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 oh, goodness, you guys. Okay, um, someone is needlessly keeping themselves, Nine of Wands, someone is needlessly keeping themselves in a really destructive situation. You are persevering in a way that is not necessary at all. You are working tirelessly for something that does not serve you. This is false I mean, especially with the Knight of Wands here, I'm feeling like this is false light. You are shi someone here is shining an inauthentic light. Needlessly, needlessly persevering, working themselves to the bone for something that just does not serve them. Just does not serve them. You are working, what I literally, I just heard Spirit say, you are working too hard and getting no payback. Nothing whatsoever. And it's, and there, there, there may be this, well, maybe you're the Queen of Pentacles or maybe this, you're working for this Queen of Pentacles. Okay, but I feel like someone is saying to you or promising you that you're going to get something back in return and you're not you're really not ouch ouchy ouch 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 it's time to let this go wheel of fortune it's been time it's been time They just gave me an, al an analogy of like, I, I was hearing, I, I heard an alarm going off and then I saw, they were give you, giving me an analogy of a cake being in an oven and it's like, you're, you're over, you have over baked this cake, man. Like by the time you bring the, <laughs> by the time you pull this thing out of the oven, it's gonna be black and just a rock. Like no moisture left, <laughs> just burnt. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not like laughing at you. I'm just laughing at the analogy. Oof. Okay. Uh, Oracle guidance here. Yeah. Oracle guidance. We're going with the crystal mandala today. The crystals. All right. Let's see. Let's get your oracle guidance here. You know, okay, you know what? I'm gonna say this because this song has been on my mind for, for a few days now. Um, uh, hold on, I don't, I, this, the name of the song is called Where I Wanna Be. Um, 
and I don't remember the name of the artist. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys, but it's the hook. That's that's um Donnell Jones, where I wanna be, and it's the hook that's 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 been repeating in my head. But when you love someone, you just don't treat them bad. Oh, how I feel so sad now that I want to leave. Right? So that's, and, and I'm saying that because as I'm channeling these energies, that song is playing in my head and it's putting into perspective because that doesn't really resonate with me. You know, I, I'm not, I haven't been with anybody. I mean, it could resonate with me because it could go, it, it kind of does speak to, you know, what I went through with my ex-husband. But I mean, that was two years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, that's not really relevant to my life right now, but it is relevant to this situation because it does feel like somebody is obligated to stay in a situation that no longer serves them and they don't necessarily ah so that's what that queen of pentacles energy could be you could very well be the masculine here okay but the queen of pentacles energy is that nurture is that caregiver is that loving energy and it and even though she's not reversed she's upright okay she's not reversed i do feel like for certain people, you're thinking clearly about this. If you are resonating as this queen of pentacles, this nurturing, caregiving, providing energy, I do feel like you're, th you're, you're thinking clearly, you're thinking with, from a, a grounded point of view, but you are staying in this nurturing, caregiving energy in this situation is five of swords. It's enabling. It's destructive. It's uh, lose lose. Like nobody is winning here. You're definitely not winning here because you're getting drained. Like you're 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 being drained of all all of your energy, all of your resources, whatnot, whatever. But also the other people that you are providing for are providing for. Right, providing for. I'm putting that in air quotes for a reason because you're just enabling them in staying in some sort of mindset. That is not serving you and it's not serving them either. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. So let's get to your Oracle guidance now. Keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading. All right. So there, I'm picking up on a lot of different scenarios here. Just take it as it resonates. All right. One last shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Here we go. Okay. We have. Ah, all right. Card number 43, Goddess Matanji and Heliotrope. Already there is value. Okay. Interesting, because this card, I believe this card talks about... Um, recognizing the value of what you already have in front of you. Interesting. Ooh, sorry guys. Okay, here we go. Already there is value. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. Oh, let me say it this way. Already there is, is value. Wait. Anyway, you get it. Okay, fine. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of, our creat of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with you. I feel like this has to do with you finding the value within yourself, the value within who you are and what you have to offer in this world, Instead of, I'm just getting a strong sense of it being you finding the value of you as you are in your natural state rather than what someone else makes you into.
Interesting. This is a very interesting message. It does feel like, you know, it's, it's, Yeah, it feels like a little bit, it feels a little bit like it's, um, sorry, I'm at a loss for words at the moment. It feels like it's the opposite of what we were talking about here, but yet somehow it fits. I don't know, I, I mean, what I'm feeling in terms of what it, what we have here is you needing to recognize the value within yourself there may be uh, an energy, yeah, there may be an energy of over giving, but also trying to prove yourself, like overly trying to prove yourself in some way or provide something in some way. Uh, but yeah, that's your, that's your oracle guidance there. Let me see if I can pull out some more messages from this. I wanna read these two first paragraphs for some reason. I don't know why, so I'm just gonna read them. The innovative creative mind tends to be future oriented. It can see how things could be. There is excitement for what is yet to be and a desire to embrace the new and perhaps a feeling of excitement for what is unusual and stands apart from what has been. This can be healthy and helpful. Newness can bring energy and uplift change. It is wise, however, to not rapidly cast away all that has been all that has been to make space for the new it is a question of discernment and degree sometimes it will be appropriate to take extreme measures to purge the past at other times it is simply not necessary and if you do not pause to consider the value of what you are releasing you may lose valuable resources that will support your future perhaps it is an idea that will need to be further worked upon for the full divine brilliance to be revealed or a connection that already exists is going to unexpectedly rise up and support you and your divine work in some way. Whether there is an old idea half completed, an opportunity yet not yet acted on, or information not yet taken in a dis in taking in taken in and digested, excuse me, the oracle says that something valuable is right under your nose. It may well be the very thing that helps you bridge the past and the future. You are guided to sit with your creative efforts and what already exists in your life with your relationships, your possessions, the information you have at your disposal. Is there information, a project, situation, or inner guidance you have already received that you are not yet to, uh, that, that you are yet to fully integrate and apply in your life? Is there something within that could be beneficial to you? Use your intuition. Allow yourself to feel for your inner guidance. Is there something you have too quickly dismissed as trash that could actually be transformed into treasure? If you are inspired to reinvigorate a past practice, to revive or reinvent yourself, a brand or a project, then the Oracle brings encouragement for this process. If you are going through a creative process of growth, perhaps having completed a body of work with a certain philosophy or approach and now feeling to head in a different direction, or perhaps as a parent now stepping into a professional arena, for example, this oracle brings you guidance. Do not dismiss the value of what you have done up until this point. It is in no way diminished because you are growing. You are growing because you have done all that you have done. Your past efforts can continue to have a positive impact in the lives of others, even whilst you move on with your life into the next phase of your journey. I really only intended to read two paragraphs of that and I just read the whole thing, but that's okay. It was necessary because when I did read the whole thing, then it made a lot more sense. But there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you all for happy hour this evening. And I also look forward to connecting with you again for our weekend edition of Morning Coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!